So in this video, we're going to talk about inertia, the centripetal force, and the apparent centrifugal force. And we'll start with a discussion of inertia. So inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in motion, whether at rest or already in motion. So an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion continues moving at the same speed and the same direction. And this is the key point. Unless acted on by an outside or external force. And the inertia depends on an object's mass. The greater the mass, the greater the resistance to the change. Or in other words, the more inertia. So we can take a look at one example, and that is of an airplane carrying and dropping a payload. So initially, the airplane is traveling forward at some velocity, at which point it will drop the payload. But the payload has inertia. It will want to continue moving at the same speed, so motion in the same manner, as the airplane. But this motion will be opposed by air friction. So the horizontal motion will be opposed. And this is exactly what we mean by unless acted upon by an outside force. If it wasn't for air friction, well then the inertia would see that object, that payload, continue to move in the same manner. So now let's take a look at a few examples of both linear and rotational inertia. So linear inertia is what we've already discussed in the, our example of an airplane dropping a payload. And linear inertia is defined as an object in motion resisting change, and importantly, to its straight line motion. And an example of linear inertia is that of a fuel truck suddenly stopping. So that's what we see in this left illustration here. We have a fuel truck which suddenly stops, and therefore its velocity is equal to zero, at least once it is fully stopped. But the fuel contained in the fuel truck has inertia, so it will want to continue moving in the same straight line motion. But this is actually what makes driving a fuel truck or a milk truck or a truck or other vehicle carrying large volumes of fluid potentially very dangerous. Because as this fuel continues moving in the same manner and sloshes to the front of the tank, it can have enough force such that the tank is penetrated and the fluid comes to spill or forcefully impact the driver and any passengers contained within the cabin. Now then we have rotational inertia. And rotational inertia is a rotating object resisting change to its angular motion. So this is essentially the same thing as the linear inertia, except instead of being concerned with the straight line motion, rotational inertia refers to the angular motion. And a classic example to demonstrate this is that of a spinning object, such as a wheel on a shaft. And this is, of course, what we see in this right image here. We have our wheel on a shaft. Now let's consider two cases. First, we can imagine the wheel is at first not spinning, so that is its state of motion, no motion at all. And if we want the wheel to begin spinning by applying some force to the wheel in order to get it to spin, well again, it will have inertia, it will resist that change. So force and more force will have to be applied in order to get the wheel spinning and to get it spinning faster and faster. Now, if the wheel is already spinning, it's already in motion angularly, well, if we want it to stop, Again, if we're applying a force, spinning, 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 if we were to remove that force, it's not going to immediately stop. It's going to keep rotating, and it wants to continue rotating in that same manner until acted upon by an outside force, which will come from friction between the wheel and the shaft, air resistance, and so on. So the centripetal force is the inward force that's required to keep an object moving in a circular path. And the centripetal force acts perpendicular to the object's velocity, pulling it toward the center of the circle. And without the centripetal force, inertia would cause the object to move in a straight line. So again, we can consider the example of a car moving in a curved path, and in this case, a fully circular path. And like we said, the centripetal force acts perpendicular to the object's velocity, pulling it toward the center. So in this case, at this position, the velocity would point straight ahead. So therefore, the centripetal force is perpendicular, 90 degrees to that velocity, and towards the center of the circle. Now then, we can talk about the centrifugal force, which requires a little bit more nuance. Because the centrifugal force isn't a real force. 
is what we call an apparent force. And it's an apparent outward force that's experienced by objects in a rotating frame of reference. And that's because the centrifugal force is caused by inertia resisting the inward pull of the centripetal force. So again, it's not a real force. So again, we have this car initially tra traveling forward, and it's making a turn around this circle. The centripetal force pulls towards the center of the circle, perpendicular to the velocity. But because of inertia, any drivers or passengers of the vehicle will feel this apparent outward centrifugal force, and that's because of inertia. So again, we're traveling along this curved path. Inertia wants to see the contents of the car, like the passengers, continue forward. So the experience is that of the centrifugal force pushing them outwards. So there are many different applications and examples and scenarios of where the inertia, centripetal, and centrifugal forces play a very important role. And one simple example that we're all familiar with is that of a merry-go-round. So in a merry-go-round, the centripetal force keeps the riders moving in a circle, and the apparent centrifugal force makes riders feel that they are being pushed outwards. Then we have our example of a car on a curved road. We've already talked about this two times now, so we'll just review briefly. On this scenario, the centripetal force pulls the car inward. So in our picture here, the centripetal force would be acting in this direction. And it functions to follow the curve, and inertia makes the passengers feel like they're being pushed outward. And again, this is what's known as the centrifugal force. If we want to illustrate it on our image here, it would be in this direction, outwards. Lastly, we have the example of fan blades, which is a little bit different than the prior examples. And in the case of fan blades, the centripetal force holds the blades in circular motion. And inertia resists the fan speed when it's turned on or off. So again, imagine this fan is speeding very quickly. It's a very hot day. As soon as you turn it off, it doesn't instantly shut off. The inertia will see it continue rotating more and more slowly as opposing forces resist that rotation. So let's review some of the key information from this lesson. First of all, we talked about inertia, which is the tendency of an object to resist changes in motion, whether at rest or already in motion. And an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion continues moving at the same speed and the same direction unless acted on by an external force or an outside force. And inertia depends on an object's mass, where the greater the mass, the greater the resistance to change. Then this brought us to a conversation on the centripetal and centrifugal forces, where we said that the centripetal force is the inward force required to keep an object moving in a circular path, and the centrifugal force is an apparent outward force that's experienced by objects in a rotating frame of reference.